welcome to another episode of Differential Overland. I'm Josh Ashcroft. Today we're going to be looking at my 2006 Land Rover LR3. Uh, we're just going to do a little walk around. This is a, a fairly stock vehicle. It's not going to be a build follow. Um, we'll get into a little bit of why that is. Um, <clears throat> I own uh, Nomadica Outfitters and uh, this is a, a work truck for me. It's my daily driver. Um, I'm, I'm using it for hauling gear all the time, but I also own a, a 1986 Land Rover 110. We'll look at that in another build video. Um, but the reason for this, for owning this, and the reason it's it's sort of so stock is that truck is really my more dedicated off-roader, and it's kind of a rolling resto. It, it's not a restored truck, so I'm I'm constantly going to do projects on it. And so right now is actually a perfect example of that. I'm actually putting a new engine in it right now, and I don't like to have to rush those things. So I wanted a second truck that was going to be reliable, um, and that I wasn't going to have to invest a ton of money into building up. Uh, the Defender's one that I'm sort of already dumping all this money into to, you know, make it a, a badass off-roader. Um, but I wanted something that, that I could daily drive, but also if I'm in the middle of a project, be able to use it for trips because I'm having to do trips all the time for my business. This isn't just my hobby, it's, it's something that I need every day for work. So I purchased this truck about two years ago. A big part of why I bought it is out of the box, these vehicles are really, really well equipped. Uh, for overland um, tour, touring style traveling. You don't have to do much to them. Any truck I'm gonna buy, I'm generally gonna buy tires and suspension at the very least. You also need recovery points and um, uh, that often means bumpers and a lot of expensive heavy gear. One of the things that's really, really great about these is out of the box, they come with a lift built in. They come with factory rated recovery points, the ability to mount a winch behind the factory bumper. You almost don't have to do anything to them. Tires is it it's good to go. Uh, the control arms are really heavy duty. Um, you can get them with a factory rear locker. Um, the, the air suspension is, is actually really amazing. Um, it, it's, it, it gives you the ability to run it at full off-road height as though you had a lifted truck on you know, uh, 34s without having to run the big tires to get the clearance as you would on a solid axle vehicle. Um, you get the, the, the comfort on road and the, the stability by being able to lower it down and drive more safely on pavement and still have the off road ability. So it was, it was sort of a really great setup. There's tons of storage space. Um, the factory racks are actually really, really great. Got a factory snorkel, factory bed slide. It's just out of the box. You got everything you need. I've never had any problems with this truck though. The only issues that I've had to deal with in the two years of owning it are, uh, again, it, it's, it's a 2006, 15 years old, had 100 and 30,000 miles when I bought it. Um, I've put about 40,000 on it, and it, the, the alternator started to go out of me. Um, I had a door lock sensor go bad, and it thinks the truck's being stolen and starts honking the horn. Um, I had a, a solenoid for the air compressor go bad, and it gave you a little bit of warning. Other than that, um, it's just been normal maintenance stuff. The, the wheel bearings needed to be replaced and the rear control arm bushings. And those are really the key issues. What, one of the, the beauties of this truck is it is super reliable. The engine on this is the most reliable engine that's ever been put in a Land Rover, whatever that's worth. I paid $8,000 for this truck. Um, that was two years ago. The, the, the used market for cars has gone crazy. So you're gonna pay probably more like 12 to, probably more like 12 for this truck now. Um, for me, it's been a really, really great value. I still think even at today's prices, compared to anything else on the market, what you're getting for this, it just drives awesome. Um, it's a really, really, really great buy. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about what I've done to the truck. As I said, it's, it's not a lot. It's mostly uh, modified with factory parts. The, the biggest, most important mod are the tires. I'm running um, KO2s on it, 285, 65, 18s. That is the biggest size that you can run and still fit the spare tire into the stock location. Caveat to that, if you're gonna buy those, you have to deflate the tire to get it in. I did an electronic lift. We just reprogrammed the air suspension to have its default starting height be about an inch, inch and a half taller. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look inside. I've got the fridge. Um, so when we're doing lunch, I just drop the tailgate, um, drop the air suspension so you got a nice, easy, accessible height. And um, this is the factory slide. It doesn't come out super far, but it pulls out super easy. This has third row seating. You can pull this thing out anytime, just slides on out. I just keep all of my sort of like food and cooking gear here, fridge for the cold food, table, and then behind here we put firewood if we're taking that. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see this, but up above there's a, a little rack that mounts to the ceiling here. I believe it's by Bermach. Um, it, I've just got random miscellaneous stuff up there. Tire patch kit, pillow, uh, backup sleeping bag, um, snatch straps, gloves, things like that. 
Um, along the side, there's additional built-in storage on both sides. And um, alongside the slide, there's additional storage there. The truck has just an amazing amount of space. It's really square um, compared to like the Range Rover Classics that have the angled back end. You just have so much more storage space in this vehicle. All right, let's take a look at the interior. Uh, this is an SE model. The highest trim level is HSE, but there's very little difference in the United States. They all come super well equipped. This has the cold weather package with the heated seats. Um, the only options this truck really doesn't have is the uh, touchscreen navigational display, which is actually kind of neat because it does have built-in diagnostics. Um, so you can do, you can get into all the little factory modes and deal with stuff, which is pretty cool. Um, otherwise, I don't usually like touchscreen stuff. Um, and this does not have the locking rear diff. Another thing I really like about this truck is it's kind of a transitional year or, or style for a Land Rover and everything's still pretty analog. Um, you've got buttons and switches for everything. Um, the the uh, terrain response mode, which I don't like that name, but um, the dial for tier, your your air suspension and your, your low range and uh, hill descent are all right here, very accessible. And you have switches to actually activate them uh, versus touch screens, which kind of drive me nuts because you got to look at them and they can, you know, if they're not working, then nothing works. So that's one sort of downside to it. But let's talk about the modes um, and how this thing works, the air suspension. The the, the factory air suspension has a, a, a normal driving height and, and that's what you're supposed to be driving at almost all the time. There's an access mode that you can drop it down into um, just to make loading and getting in and out easier, but you can't really drive at that speed. You're too low and it'll automatically raise you back up. Then you have off-road height. It takes you up two inches from stock. Um, again, that's one that's really meant for clearing obstacles. Uh, you can only go about 25 miles an hour with that, and um, your CVs are more extended, so you don't want to be doing um, as extended driving like that if you don't have to. There is actually a fourth height called, I believe it's called extended mode, where if you, if you get super stuck or high centered, it'll push the control arms down even further to help you get off of that. Um, but that's one that you is really just for getting over the obstacle because then your your CVs are at such a sharp angle that um, it'll damage them if you're doing much. So it's really simple, just switch up, switch down uh, for, for going up or down. The terrain response, um, th this is actually one of the things with this vehicle that it was perceived of as being a very high tech vehicle, that there's all these electronics, um, things that can go wrong. So what's the terrain response? The terrain response has five different modes to it and those modes control your traction control, your throttle response, um, the transmission shift points, and your locking differentials. So really those are the, the systems that they're using. There's nothing really unique there that isn't on pretty much any modern four-wheel drive. The terrain response just changes how those things behave in different scenarios. So what's great about that is it allows you to sort of tune it for these different conditions but it requires the user to sort of use their discretion and judgment as to when to use that proper setting. And that can be a little bit unclear sometimes as to which mode you should be in. The other piece is the traction control. Uh, the traction control is amazing. Um, I'm not a huge fan of traction control in general, uh, but modern cars, they, they've, the, the new Toyotas, the Subarus, it works. You, you kind of don't even need front or rear lockers. Um, I still want them, but it's amazing what you're able to get over with just the traction control. That's my essentially stock Land Rover LR3. Um, as you've seen, this is kind of a, this build was sort of an exercise in restraint of, of what's the absolute bare minimum that I need for uh, this sort of overland adventure travel exploration. Um, as you can see in our Oahe video, this truck was able to go everywhere that the Gladiator Rubicon on 37s was able to go. So uh, we we're hoping to sort of like show everyone else and you know inspire others that, that you don't need uh, a seventy thousand dollar gladiator to to go explore these really amazing remote places you can get there with a pretty basic budget build and uh, it's been a bit of an exercise for myself i tend to maybe go a little overboard in building out my vehicles but because i have the the other defender to kind of like you know nurse that interest this one was one that was like okay i'm gonna make this be a, a good daily driver i'm gonna try to not compromise it so much on the road and um also keep it on a budget so um Next time, the, I'm hoping the next vehicle we'll be able to show you is my Defender. Hopefully we'll have the new engine in there soon and we can take a look at the 110. So thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe Differential Overland.